Hi, I'm Barry Klein, owner and designer of Trendsetter Yarns. Welcome to a Trendsetter Tidbit. Many of you have been asking how to use this yarn that we have called Cha Cha. It's a ribbon, and along the top there's some open boxes, but many of you don't understand the technique. So join me today and I'll walk you through the process. Here's Cha Cha in a skein. As you can see, it has to be wound and prepared. So we're going to start right there. So grab your yarn, grab a friend, grab your yarn umbrella and your winder and join me. We'll take care of it together. Welcome back to our winding room. What I'm doing is taking the open hank and putting it on my yarn umbrella. I'm going to take the umbrella and open it up all the way. Make sure to tighten it. What you'll find around the yarn are some white ties. This is what's keeping the yarn in place to make sure that the yarn's going to come off properly. Check to make sure that you can see the white tie all the way. As long as you can, you're ready to go. Take a sharp scissor and cut off the ties. I usually just drop them on the floor. Makes life easy for the moment. Find the second tie and it'll have the yarn tied into it. Once you find that, take it and make sharp, straight cuts through the center of a box. Now you've got even edges. There's two ways to wind it. I don't suggest using a yarn winder because what we want to do is make sure that the yarn stays perfectly straight. So in some cases, I use my label. I put the yarn in the center of the label and I start to wrap it. And I take it and I twist it using the label to keep it straight. If you come up to a curl, just turn the yarn and keep rolling. You want to do this for the entire skein. If you do the right prep work, knitting cha-cha will be a breeze. Every couple of turns, turn your label and wrap in the opposite direction. If you should have any kind of toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls, that'll work really well. Take it, rip it in half or use it as is, and wrap the yarn around it. Keep going until the entire skein is ready to go. So, wrap, wrap your yarn, grab some needles, size eights or nines, and let's get started putting cha-cha on the needles and knitting it together. Welcome back, let's put cha-cha on the needle. First of all, we don't really cast on as we normally do with a long tail cast on or knitting on our stitches. We're actually placing the open boxes right on our needle. But we don't want to have to bury a tail because cha-cha is a really thick yarn. So to get started, we take it and we create a hem by folding over two boxes in a row, one on top of the other. We take our needle in our right hand and from back to front, we put threads right on the needle. So that's considered one stitch cast on. Come to the next one and working from back to front, there's your second. Go to the next one, your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and you just continue this method over the back and towards you, over the back and towards you, and all those threads are now your stitches. So if we count what's on the needle, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's put ten stitches on the needle. As we normally do, we turn our knitting around. But normally when we knit, we knit into the front of our stitches. In this instance, we want the ribbon to come together and create the ruffles. So to do that, we're going to knit each of our stitches not through the front, but through the back. It's a little more difficult, it's going to take a little bit of time, so take a deep breath and let's get started. We take our right needle and we put it into the back. So, as carefully as possible, not to puncture the ribbon, you're going through the thread into the back. And the same method that you use for knitting, you wrap your yarn over the needle, you're going to go in that same direction, but instead of taking the whole yarn, you're only taking the thread of the next box, coming through and pulling it off. Again, go into the back of the stitch. Here's your next open box, the same action, but not the whole thread, just the top thread of the open box and come through. There's two. Go into the next one as carefully as possible. The next open box, pick up the thread and pull it through. And as you can see, we're creating knit stitches and the ruffles are coming together. One by one, you work your way across the row. So go ahead and work your way across the row and join me back here at the end of the row. Okay, I got to the end of my row and now I'm just gonna continue. As we talked about earlier, now you're going to continue by knitting in the front of your stitch as regular. Put your needle in, 
and grab the top of the box and pull it through. And you're gonna to continue to do this row after row after row until you do the number of rows that you want to do. In some cases, as I'm gonna show you right now, I've used cha-cha for an entire scarf. And here's an entire scarf of cha-cha. You see the ruffles on both sides, row after row. And I just continued until I ran out of yarn or had enough to bind off. In other cases, it's been mixed with merino and I've done a feather and fan pattern. So you can see the lace. It's 16 rows of lace and six rows of cha-cha. And you can count the number of rows by counting the ruffles. Here's one, here's two, here's three. But there's also cha-cha on the other side. So rows four, five, and six. You can always count your pattern by counting your rows. In other instances, I've used it on the diagonal. And what that means is you decrease at the beginning of the row, increase at the end. So you always have the same number of stitches. The following row, you just knit straight across. And this is 20 rows of minestrone and one, two, three, four, five, and five on the opposite side. So 10 rows of cha-cha. And it's done that way for the entire scarf. So you've got lots of options. Come join us back again and we'll show you how to do some other things. Well, I've just been sitting here and knitting away. As you can see, I've probably got about 10 or 12 rows on here. The one thing to notice is that I knit continental style. My yarn is in my left hand, which from your angle looks like my right hand, but it is indeed my left hand. So for those of you that are throwers, the process is exactly the same. You put your needle in from the front and you pick up the yarn. I'm not really good at it, but you're gonna pick it up with your right hand. And your process is you take it and you throw it over. Just take it, make that action, throw it over, and pull your thread through. Nothing changes. Just find a rhythm that makes you happy. Once you get in that rhythm, continue to go. The other thing is, see that the boxes are always straight across the top. By winding the yarn the right way, as we learned earlier, it will just continue to pull right off the ball. And it makes, it, it makes your knitting that much easier. When you get to the end of the row and you need to change yarns, or you want to just be done, you work until there's two stitches left. You count five open boxes. One, two, three, four, five. You're gonna take your scissor, cut through the fifth box, and do what we call the reverse hem. So you're gonna take your yarn, fold it over two boxes towards you, and do your last two stitches picking up the hem so you have no tails to bury. If indeed you're more of a verbal person than a visual person, on the outside of each of the balls of yarn is a label. On the inside is instructions on how to do this as well. To see more of what Trendsetter has to offer, visit our website, www.trendsetteryarns.com. Come back and see us again. In the meantime, enjoy your knitting.